Hello again. This is my first update on uh, my my journey with um, this homemade Chapman stick inspired tapping instruments. Uh, so one thing that's going to be different about this update, which I really lament, especially at this early stage, is that I had intended to uh, to do another recording showing where I'm at with with improving my skills with it over this week. Uh, and I intend to keep doing videos showing where my skills are at week by week. Uh, but it's a little hard this week. I, I I really should have been doing it, doing a little bit of recording every day, I think, and this is where I've messed up. Um, it's a little hard this week, and maybe you'll understand why if I, if I show what's happened with the instrument itself. Now, um, I'm going to apologize, there might be a lot of car noises in this particular video. I decided to go outside, hoping that the video quality would be better, and also just because I feel like being outside. Um, but hopefully it's tolerable. If it's not, I'll, I'll learn, I'll adapt. Uh, in the future, that is. You're just going to deal with it this time, I'm afraid. Um, Alright, so what's happened with the instrument that means that you're not going to hear me play this week? Well, um, I'll show you. I'll show you. Two things. I'll show, I'll show all of the changes that I've made this week. So one of them is, you'll see that I put in this, uh, this tape on, on the frets where the, whoops, geez, on the frets where the inlays are. I put in this tape to make it more visible. I found that I was playing in the evenings in dimmer light a lot, and the inlays were just not enough for me to know where I was on this behemoth um and so i i got this wow it's really reflective in this shot that's nice uh yeah so i got this um metallic reflective tape stuff um and it seems to be doing the trick a bit better and it kind of goes with the with the metallic aesthetic that's already on the instrument so i'm reasonably happy with it and it's non-destructive i didn't have to mess up the fretboard or anything for it um, so that's one change. Another change is, uh, can you see? So you might not realize it on, at first glance, but there's supposed to be another string here. Um, yep, that, uh, that high string, oops, jeez. That high string is no longer there, and that's because it snapped off at the top, just at the very top, so it still goes through the, the eyelet in the tuner, um, but it does not, um, thank God, where can I sit this thing, forget it. Uh, it still goes through the eyelet in the tuner, but uh, it doesn't wrap around and stay, so it's not a usable string, so I'm gonna either have to find some solution for that, um, where I can keep using the string because I only need to attach, be able to attach something to the very top end of it in order to make that work, or I'm going to have to um, buy new strings. But for those of you who are not initiated, this is not as simple as buying a guitar string. Why? Two reasons. Uh, well, they're kind of both the same reason, but. This thing is really tall. Uh, getting from, whoops, getting from here, getting from, good God, getting from here down to here, whoop, there, at the very bottom there, at the bottom of the bridge, um, you know, and being able to wrap around the tuning peg comfortably, probably need 1.2, 1.3 meter long strings, but standard guitar strings, are um, just under a meter. Uh, they're, yeah, just under a meter. They're just about a meter. Um, so that makes it difficult. Uh, you'd think, you know, also, I mean, it's a high string. It's, it's a very thin string that's used on that. Uh, so even a typical 
set of guitar strings wouldn't have a thin enough string, but some of them do. Uh, but that doesn't solve my problem, unfortunately, because I need a longer string. This thing is, you know, about as long as the from from bridge to tuning peg. It's a little bit longer, actually, than my um, than my electric bass. Um, so that's a bit of a pain. I may have to order new strings in. I may just have to do without a high string. Uh, in the meanwhile, I won't be high strung. All right, moving along. Um, another thing that has changed, and this is the real reason why I'm not giving a demo today. See those holes there? That's where the belt buckle used to be screwed in. But, but, but. Yeah, that's where the belt buckle used to be screwed in. Those are four screws holding the belt buckle in. That belt buckle, when I was talking about it before, I couldn't remember what it was made out of. It was made out of acrylic apparently uh, and it snapped it was not strong enough um, that was there was a little bit of concern about that when it was put in oh is this gonna hold is it not not is the answer unfortunately so I've had to order in uh, something that I think can replace it that's made out of metal and good god I hope it works uh, I've, I've rushed the order so I've spent more than I should have on it um, which sucks, uh, you know, these little expenses are adding up and it's, it's, uh, it's not so little when you combine all these things together anymore. Um, it's not so little anymore when you combine these things together. So that's a bit of a pain. Um, I'll give a verbal update on, on where I'm at with my, with my journey learning to play. Uh, so chords. I'm starting to be able to switch between chords a bit more fluidly. Let's see if I can sort of show, at least visually. <laughs> Whoa, where am I? I've got a... Ah, I won't make excuses for myself. There we go. Right. Ba, 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 ba. Those are the... Whoops, those are the two main forms that I've been using. I'm starting to be able to switch between them a bit more fluidly and, you know, it's not that hard to play with some basic accompaniment on the bass strings. Um, so, you know, I can do some real basic stuff with, with chords and accompaniment now, which is kind of cool. It still is not fluid, but it's more fluid than it was. And I really wish that I had recorded the stages of fluidity. Uh, you know, just, just, I kind of want to show uh, I, I kind of want to show the process, what it's like from start to finish of starting with something, being real bad at it, and practicing, grinding it out, and getting progressively better. That's, that's what I am hoping to show with this series of videos. Um, yep, and uh, Construction of Light is moving along. I've been doing this thing where I've been practicing so there's the bass part, and then my plan is to do a uh, is to do a um, uh, God, why can't I think of the word? You know, a, a rescoring, a liberal cover of it, shall we say, um, where I'm skipping a lot of the opening and I'm moving straight to uh, a section where they where they have these um, polyrhythmic um, parts of two guitars, and I'm. I'm playing both both parts of the polyrhythm on the uh, on the stick, you know, one one with the melody strings, one with the bass strings, um, and so I've started on that, and I can I can sort of play at a slow pace this uh, this section that's uh, I would call it five sixteen against eleven sixteen. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm starting to be able to do that. Um, but the problem is it doesn't stay 1116. It, it goes into some, some different rhythms. It switches from 11 to, to five on top. Um, and, uh, and then it does a couple other things. It has like two or three changes. So uh, having gotten under my belt, the 11 against five, um, melodies somewhat, I'm not, I'm not claiming 
proficiency, but I'm claiming that, you know, I, I can start to do it. Uh, I, I have decided to learn the whole sequence with all the changes um, in order to start to play the, the full thing against itself so I don't get too used to only doing 11 against 5 because that's not the whole thing. So that's where I'm at with Construction of Light. It's, it's, it's laborious. It's a bit of a pain in the ass because actually playing it at the original octave uh, and playing both parts of the original octave would have me playing at the same part of the fretboard you know, really high up on the fretboard, uh, real high up on the fretboard with both hands, which, you know, if I'm, if I'm playing here with this hand, it's very hard to get in those strings with this hand. You don't really want to do that. So I've taken them both down an octave. Um, and I think it's, I think it still sounds good. And thank God I did. And I did that anyway, because that top string doesn't work. So playing the higher octave is a real pain now. Um, truck. All right. Um, yep, so that's my progress with that. Uh, one other thing that I've changed just before I go, I think those are really the only things that I've been practicing. So uh, the only other thing that I want to bring up is the change with the saddle pieces. You remember these saddle pieces, which I'm, I haven't been totally satisfied with. Well, I brought the, I have realized these saddle pieces were made to fit really snugly so that there is friction moving back and forth, uh, up and down in these grooves, uh, so that they don't just move too freely. But I realized that, um, they can be, um, they don't have to fit so closely and that extra bit of friction is not that important uh, because the strings are holding them down just fine so I've sanded the sides down so that they're a little bit thinner and now the strings are pretty much the main thing that's holding them in place um, which is a good thing and I've also brought some of them down the action was a little too high so I brought the action down by sanding a few of those saddle pieces down and that's part of what's such a pain about this saddle you know it would be much better if there was some sort of mechanism for adjusting the action at the saddle without destructively lowering the height by sanding. Um, it's, it's not an ideal method. But anyway, those are, those are the modifications that have happened and that's where I'm at with practice. Again, I, I wish I could show off, uh, or not show off, but you know, show where I'm at with, uh, with playing a little bit better, but it's really hard without that belt buckle, I tell you what. Um, so this will have to do for now. Hopefully I'll, I'll get that belt buckle going again soon. Um, if you come across this, do all the like, comment, subscribe shit that I guess people do to make YouTube happy, to feed the algorithm as they say. Um, and I'll catch you next week. See ya.